What is up, dudes and dudes to the internet? My name is Ed, and we are back here small trade on the Xbox Uno. And I'm sorry that it's been such a long time since I ended up having an Xbox episode, everybody. I really, really am, but I've been super duper busy, uh, and we're gonna talk about most of that stuff today for sure. But I did want to talk about some of the relevancy of stuff that is going on with uh, Trove and everything like that because you may or may not have seen over the past uh, couple days that we ended up getting attacked in the PC club world, right? And then I ended up completely forgetting that the same person was actually a part of the Xbox club world, so they ended up destroying everything. The whole biome was just gone. Uh, I am happy to report, though, that I did get in contact with the devs and they, they were a huge help because they ended up actually not only fixing the PC Club World, but they ended up re-rolling our Xbox Club World as well, and that is absolutely awesome. Uh, they did say that normally it is against their rules because uh, I ended up from try and support, ended up getting the same message that I got the first time we ended up getting attacked, where it was, you know, oh, you know, because the person who did it did it of their own accord and wasn't hacked, so I just want to say, moving forward, we're going to try and keep that in mind as much as we can, folks, and I recommend you all do the same, especially you out there that has uh, smaller club worlds. Do not promote anybody to officer or leader or anything like that unless you actually trust them, which I did trust this person. That's the only reason why I destroyed everything. Um, but anyways... Let's go and do some adventuring today on the good old Xbox. I'm just gonna go to U5 because I suck at this game and still haven't had any time to grind anything. Um, I want to talk about the Megalithic update. That is what they're gonna be calling it. That is going to be the huge update. Uh, you know, again, let's let's kind of reestablish things and let's kind of put things back into gear here. That either this month, next month, maybe the month after that at the latest. Uh, that megalithic update is going to end up hitting consoles. I'm expecting either somewhere soon this month, maybe, or somewhere in next month is where I'm kind of assuming that's going to end up hitting. But that update is going to end up bringing the console versions up to the same version that the PC version is at. I, I want to make that perfectly clear because every time I talk about it, there's always that one person who's like, Does that mean that I'm going to be able to play the Xbox version of Trove with my PC friends? No, it's not merging all the versions together uh, of Trove. It's just bringing the console versions up to that version. You remember when Terraria updated to 1.3 on the PC and then a little while after it updated to that onto the consoles? Yeah, that's all it really is. But there is also the gem update subclasses and shadow towers and stuff like that. Uh, and while we are going to end up talking about that in another video very, very soon, because I'm very excited to announce that a lot of that content is actually already almost developed. Uh, including, especially, there was actually on the Trove Twitter feed, uh, they ended up tweeting out a picture of the new crafting table that is going to be dedicated to re-rolling your gems. Now, uh, I'll talk about that in, uh, in more detail very, very soon, but I don't think people realize just how game-changing gem re-rolling is going to end up being, right? Um, I guess we can just get into it today, because honestly, who cares? Um, but the reason why gem stat re-rolling is going to be such a big deal, and the gem stat re-rolling, the shadow towers, and the subclasses are all going to be coming after the megalithic update. That's going to be the next big update, not, not including small side patches and stuff like that. So we'll see what ends up happening and when that gets released. But, uh, you know, don't, don't kid yourselves, guys and gals. Rerolling your gems is going to be a huge game changer because if you're a person that's played Trove, quit Trove and watching the series. First of all, thank you, you freak. I really do appreciate it. I can't even believe that you're still watching me play this game that you yourself are not interested in playing anymore. But to those of you that quit, I, I got a question for you. Why did you end up quitting? Was it just because the game ended up getting too grindy? Or was it because of the gem system? 
Come on, we all know it's because of the gems, because of the fact that you would end up grinding for a billion zillion hours for random number generation to end up just blessing you with, oh no, it's a perfect static gem, I finally got it. I don't know why you would be screaming, oh no, you would be screaming yes, but in any case, that is pretty much why most people end up quitting, right? It's just because the gems always end up generating really bad. So, I've got a small tip for all of you folks out there. If you have any three, uh, not three star gems, if you have any two star gems with three stats, hold on to them. Because when you're going to, like, on top of just being able to re-roll the gems and making it so that it's not impossible to end up getting perfect statted gems, it does mean that any existing gems are going to be able to be re-rolled as well. So, that gem that you've got right now sitting in your inventory that has crit hit, crit damage, and health regen, which makes it useless, might actually be not so useless when that update ends up hitting. These guys are completing the dungeon faster than I can sneeze. Because suddenly you can re-roll that health regen stat and turn it into physical or magical damage. So, I, I just want to kind of, like, let that sink in for a minute. Okay, it's been a minute. That's a micro minute. But... Just to let you know, folks, save all your gems because that really is going to be a huge game changer. And on top of that, when the subclasses end up coming out, that's going to be a big deal as well. Now, here's where a little bit of the speculation ends up coming in because honestly speaking, folks, I would not be surprised if they end up adding some type of pay-to-win method to uh, this gem stat re-rolling. And I'm all for it because then it would mean that Trove, finally, after all this time, would become a proper, fully pay-to-win game. Because it, Trove is completely pay-to-win right now. It is. You know, the, the, the fact that you end up uh, leveling up your gems with gem boosters and stuff like that already makes the current gem system crazy because you have to use gem boosters to level up some of your later gems. Otherwise, you end up grinding for a very long time. Now... Maybe you gem boosters are going to be what ends up being used. I don't even care about this dungeon. Maybe gem boosters are what are going to end up being used uh, to uh, randomize the gem stats. Um, maybe it's going to be related to gem dust. Wouldn't that be nice if you actually didn't have to uh, pay anything to reroll the gems? Because while I'm leaning towards, like, I think that they're going to end up making it something pay to win because then they would have two facets that would end up touching upon being pay to win with the gems. Because as it stands right now, even if you pay and get all of the, you know, all of the items to end up uh, making your gems super duper powerful, it doesn't really matter because the chance of getting a good empowered up gem and empowered gems are going to be re-rollable as well. The, the problem is that you can't, you know, you can't get them. You're limited to uh, how much gems you can end up getting because you have to grind them all yourself, right? You have to grind like hours and hours of the game even if you're not into it. And that's where it'll be really interesting to see what they end up doing because as soon as you can end up re-rolling the gems, this is why I suspect they're gonna do some type of pay to win method with it because as soon as you can end up re-rolling the gems, suddenly you have, uh, you know, very much like other free to play MMOs, you can either grind for a million hours for the chance of getting that perfect gem, or you can just spend some money to re-roll it and make it a perfect gem. Now, the problem with that, you know, while that's okay, I could understand that. That would actually be a step in the right direction. But then, uh, we've got an issue, because now suddenly you have two paywalls for gems because you would pay to get them re-rolled and then you would also pay to level them up. And I don't think that's gonna sit too well with most uh, players on this game. Now that said, I could be dead wrong about all of that, folks. It might be that the devs are actually gonna pull a fast one on good old Scythepoo, and maybe it's not gonna be pay to win, and it's just going to end up being uh, related to gem dust. In which case, relating it to gem dust would be fine, because then the player would feel like they're actually being rewarded, it would be something that you could actually grind, and it would be something that you could actually see yourself attaining, that carrot on the end of the stick 
And, uh, you know, then it would still end up being technically pay to win because gem booster boxes can end up dropping golden gem keys, which end up giving you, if you're getting gem boxes in U9, they end up giving you stellar gems and stellar gems loot collect into a whole bunch of gem dust, right? Now, I uh, am not really up to uh, stellar gems here on the console versions. So I'm going to ask if one of you would be so kind as to let me know in the comments how much gem dust do you actually get from a stellar gem on the console version? Because on the PC version, they've bumped it up to 500. The other big reason that I'm asking this is because if it's anything lower than 500 for a stellar gem, save all of your gem boxes right now. Because if you can prepare and hold off for when that update ends up hitting, you're going to be able to cash in. Because any stellar gems that you end up getting, you're going to be getting two to three times the amount of gem dust that you would with the current build, if the current build is anything other uh, uh, other than 500 gem dust. I, I I could be wrong about that, and sorry if I am. Whoopsie daisy, I'm trying to come over to you guys over here. Uh, now, one last thing I do want to say with the megalithic update coming out, save your chaos chest, folks, uh, and save all of the mounts that you have that are tradable right now that you get out of the chaos chest, because once the megalithic update ends up hitting, folks, tradable chaos chests are not going to be a thing anymore. They are all going to become untradable. The, the chaos chest that you have right now, those ones are not suddenly going to transform into non-tradable ones. Uh, they are still going to be considered a tradable chaos chest, but any new chaos chests that come into rotation are going to be untradable, and any new mounts that come into rotation are also going to end up being untradable. Usually they'll have maybe one of the mounts within the chaos chest ro weekly rotation is going to end up actually being, uh, you know, a tradable item, but for the most part, we're going to lose a lot of the tradable stuff, and thus ends up making a lot of the in-game economy collapse right pretty much the only best way that you can end up making flux after that update ends up hitting and i'm just trying to prepare you uh prepare you all for this folks is either market flipping i don't have the time for it i never bothered learning it and i honestly don't care um or just grinding and the only thing that you can end up trading after that update pretty much is just grinding resources honestly speaking i would still recommend uh either grinding or flipping radiant shards if you can uh and radiant just those radiant shards and radiant uh crystallized clouds and stuff like that because generally the radiant shards are something that is constantly being used because of the rune crafting even in the late game because you actually use them uh to craft the transit portals right I at least think it's in the, I don't know, I, I think it's there. But in, in any case, um, that's pretty much all the time that we have for today, everybody. Also, I, I do want to mention a couple things here, which is very exciting. First of all, I do want to say that I know SCAD, uh, SCAD1, that's the username, I know that he's got a really killer club world. I intend to visit it when I have the time and want to actually play the mini games. He's actually got a really killer club world, which is uh, if you go through his maze, that's actually in the Jub Jub hub right now, really close by to the hub. Uh, you get through his maze and then there's a portal. Actually, there's a portal right at the front too. I would recommend checking that world out. And I have a couple shout outs today. Um, and unfortunately, I'm not going to announce the items that these people ended up giving me. Generally speaking, uh, for a little bit, I might not do that. Uh, and and I might just stop doing that altogether and just give shout outs to the name. So we got Double Take 1992, uh, Bias Crayfish 569, which is hilarious. Captain Redbeard did, no, he didn't give me stuff. He, that was his message from him. Fade Galaxy with uh, two X's and two Y's, uh, Stove Top Fever, Twisted Dark Rye, and I want to give a congratulations to a couple people that ended up making Officer because it's been a long time coming, and I'm sorry that it took me so long to actually do this. I was sorting out all sorts of crazy stuff with all the PC craziness that's been going on, but I want to give a congratulations and a nice little golf clap to Zombie 3, uh, he, Zombie, but he's got three in his name, Ninja92. He's bumped up to Officer because that dude not only has been around for a very, very long time, but he's really proved himself by uh, really being involved with the community even through all the hard times he's actually been around and been a very good supporter he ended up actually helping out with all the other dudes uh, recreating the hub here so that was really really awesome of him uh, to stick around so congratulations buddy if you're watching 
And then also, Citrin is Beast. Because that guy, you know, he, he's another dude who's been around for a very long time, very involved with the community. He got Gonda right away, actually, by the way, which doesn't influence my opinion of him in any way. I just think that's awesome. Uh, but I bumped him up as well because, uh, you know, again, it's like he, he's been around for a very long time. And there's got to be some other people that can end up helping out uh, Captain Red. Because uh, another thing, too, that I am going to talk about very soon, but not just yet. I did this on the PC Club. I, I may end up doing something very similar with the Xbox Club where I kind of pass the torch of leadership over to somebody else where they can manage the club and they can kind of, uh, you know, it'll be like, it's their club, but I founded it and created it, and I'm still going to be a part of it and involved with the community, but it, it kind of gives them a little bit more options to kind of choose who they think should be officer and stuff like that. So, uh... I, I don't want to say anything more than that because I'm still working on, uh, you know, ideas with that behind the scenes. But in any case, this video has gone on long enough. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I very much appreciate it. I guess we'll give away five more streamer dream boxes. So all that I ask is you hit that like button uh, and leave a comment in the comment section down below. Otherwise, sign or and stay epic, everybody.